I think there's a clarity when all the stars align, whether it's making a beautiful photo or making a beautiful shot on a rising rooster that somehow brings everything into focus. Well, you know, I think labeling yourself is one of the hardest things you can do. If I was to introduce myself to someone I never met before, I, I would say I'm a storyteller, a father, and a hunter. <laughs> uh, is that what you were looking for? <laughs> in college I was in a journalism program and I started out writing and I was writing sports and it was a small enough college newspaper that they often sent me out with a camera to get a photo or two to go with the story and pretty quickly I realized that telling stories through photos was far more intriguing to me than telling stories through words. It was like a never-ending tunnel that you could go down. You can keep going and going and going and take it to whole other levels. My goal was to graduate with a photography degree and make a living with the camera. So I started out um, at a small daily newspaper in Montana as a staff photographer. I was the only one on staff. It was all on me, so every day I had to go out and fill fill the newspaper with photos. One on the front page, sports, local, which was a great intro for me because it forced me daily to go out with the camera and practice. From a photography standpoint, it took me from like clicking pictures to making photographs. Eventually I left the newspaper industry and, and went out on my own and started doing more magazine and documentary work. And that's when I got connected with an international nonprofit organization that was doing work in Afghanistan and Pakistan, Tajikistan, all over Central Asia, building schools. So I started traveling overseas with them several times a year for about a five year window. I mean, one thing about photography that's changed my life, I guess, is it's allowed me to see the world. I can't imagine any reason I would have seen Afghanistan if it had not been for photography or Africa or even just places in Montana. Photography has opened doors for me. I don't know that I would have met many of the characters that I've met in my life without this medium. There's certainly an element of magic in photography, I think. I don't know that it's something you can identify in the moment all the time. I think oftentimes you recognize it after the, after the shutter is clicked. I was always hunting. I've been hunting since I was a kid. I grew up hunting. It's always been a passion of mine. And as my career progressed, my hunting world and my professional world had always been sort of parallel, never really crossed. And at some point I realized what I really want to do is combine these two. These are the stories that I want to be telling, like following bird dogs around in the field and telling stories about interesting people.
people that also happen to love hunting was really rewarding for me. I mean, I love the reward of shooting a bird. I love the reward of getting a beautiful photo, but a big part of it for me is just being out there and pursuing those things. You never master photography and you never master hunting. I can get better and I can see the improvement, but it's like this lifelong journey. And I think there is something to that. Early on, I think every hunter goes through these stages. It translates to photography too. You're trying to shoot birds, you're trying to be successful in the field and success at that level means getting a limit or getting birds in the bag. And with photography, it might mean um, getting awards for your photos or, or getting kudos from people for the photography you do. But at some point, that stuff ceases to matter as much. And I think for me, it was when I had kids and I realized that what really mattered to me was being able to pass these passions on to my kids. And it's been incredibly rewarding in a way I, I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have guessed when I was younger to see my older son Henry pick up a camera and show an interest in that and see both of my boys really get into wing shooting. My true passion now is just getting my kids out and letting them experience the joy that I get in being outdoors and watching the bird dogs run and you know watching our short hair lock up on point and walking in whether it's me or the kids walking in and flushing a bird all that it's like there's some order in the universe that locks in when all those things come together when i was in africa taking photos for a nonprofit, i met a little baby in an orphanage and uh, the stars just sort of aligned and and we ended up adopting Casa. Um, so I got to meet him weeks after he was brought into the orphanage. He was just months old then. Henry was two years old and Casa was one when we brought Casa back from Africa. So then we had a two and a one year old and I'm a traveling photographer and that was hard. At some point it became clear that it was taking a toll on the family and I needed to be home more. I had to come to terms with giving up this dream of being a world traveling photographer because I also had this dream of being a dad and having kids and the two didn't really mix. So then I quit traveling and um, just started focusing on work closer to home so I could be with my kids. But in a way, that's been the best thing that has happened to me. I mean, I wouldn't trade that for the world. I wouldn't trade that for any career. Like being a dad to my boys is, uh, it's the best thing that's happened to me. It's my life's work. And now I get to, you know, pass along some of those passions of mine. I get to pass along my passion for photography and for hunting. And what I've learned that I didn't understand when I was younger is that, uh, the one thing I love even more than traveling the world with my cameras is, is being there for my kids and and teaching them, so, you know, sharing my passions with them. Casa and Henry are incredible. They're my kids, so I'm a bit biased, but the relationship that they have is amazing. You don't even see their sort of relationship in biological brothers. And yeah, they fight like brothers sometimes, but like they deeply care about each other and take care of each other. And it's kind of amazing to witness that. My goal for the years to come is to spend as much time with them before they are out of high school and out of the house, honing in on their own interests and their own passions and also like just trying to expose them to as much of the world as possible. The 
way I was raised and the way I've raised them is like weekends we're going outside and we're doing outdoor activities and that's what brings us all to life. That's what fills all our cups. And if it involves the dogs, even more so because if there's one thing that they love more than anything, it's spending time with the dogs. It's one thing to go out with the dogs and go for a hike and hunt and get a bird or two, but I think even more rewarding for me is to do that thing and bring home a memento from that in the form of a photograph. So to be able to capture those experiences, capture those magical moments with my kids in a photo, is my way of maybe preserving that and just slowing things down just a little bit. What's next? I don't know what's next. Proust has a really good quote, the destination no longer being a place but a new way of seeing, and that resonates with me at this juncture in my life. There's so much noise in the world now. I think one of my next steps is slowing down and simplifying and narrowing in on the, on the essentials of life, whether that's time with my kids outdoors or telling a story that's really important to me. You know, you can envision a photo, you can envision the end result of flushing a bird. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When it all comes together, it's, it's pretty magical.